Welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to be covering the exercises of the chapter about resampling. Uh, let's start with this exercise number five. So as we did in the previous chapter, we were using logistic regression to predict the default status uh, in the default, well, in the default data set. Uh, in particular, we did, we did that using the income and balance as the predictors. So we are now to, we're, now we're going to be doing something similar, but uh, changing also the model using the validation approach and seeing how the, how the approximation for the test error is changing. So I have the notebook over here. We load the default data set. Uh, we can see it consists of these variables default. We're trying to predict the value yes in this, in this default column. Uh, and for now, we are not using the, the student uh, predictor as well. So for the first part, they ask us to perform a simple logistic regression using the predictor's income and balance and the response as default. So that's really something very similar as in the previous chapter. We set the predictors, uh, then we fit the model. No, over here we fit the model. And um, because we're working with these specific functions, uh, the value of the response, we do set it to either zero or one. So in this case, we transform the yes value of the default uh, uh, column uh, to one, because that is what we are uh, trying to predict as a success or as the event of interest. Uh, let's see, we do the calculations. Um, for example, uh, well, what can we say for this? Well, uh, not really that much. Maybe just take note in, for example, this part over here, that the standard errors for the coefficients uh, for income and balance, they are very, very small. Um, the p-values as well. So maybe they are quite, quite significant and predictors. Okay, so that was really something too similar to the previous chapter. Uh, now to test these new tools to we let's see it says we do a validation set approach to estimate the test error for this model. So we split into training and validation sets. Then we fit the multiple logistic regression only on the training observations. Uh, uh, and then because this model of logistic regression outputs a predicted probability, then we use those probabilities uh, corresponding to the validation observations uh, to assign a class. Uh, and they do tell us to assign a class uh, with this specific threshold of 0 0.5. So let's see in the code over here. Oh, it's over here. So we split the default data set. Uh, I consider along all of the splits in this chapter, uh, almost a, a third of the of the observations to be but to be part of the validation data set. And we fix some random state for the producibility. And simply we fit the same model, but now with different observations, and that is with the training ones, as we can see over here. Let's see. We split, we fit the model. Um, and now we predict the probabilities corresponding to the validation observations. Uh, as we can see over here, let's see, these values that we have generated, uh, uh, or maybe like okay. they are from zero to one, and they are the probabilities. And as I, as I mentioned, we simply assign is a probability greater to 0 
as a success. So in this case, we are working with zero and one for the domification, let's say, of the response variable. So we, we simply assign one. Um, and now that we assign the predicted default status for the validation observation, we simply take them in on uh, how many of those uh, predicted classes were uh, incorrect. And uh, it says about 2%. So it's really not that bad. Or maybe yes. I don't know. Probably not. Uh, there would be the estimation for the test error. Um, how does it differ from the one? I know we have some scale to put anything. Or will it? I know we didn't. Okay. So maybe I think that comes in the. Uh, yeah, in the last exercise, or exercise seven, we do that comparison. And it's actually uh, kind of surprising because the, the, the naive approach of only uh, dividing the data into training and testing, like performing no validation at all, uh, the supposed test error is quite different from the one that we estimate using validation. But, but we will get we will get there eventually. Uh, it's only exercise seven. So we were now over here. Part C. It says now repeat the previous step uh, three times but use three different splits and compare the results. Okay, so uh, it's just a loop because it's a very small number of cases that we have to check. And to perform different splits, we can change the random state that we give to this train test split function. So some, some seats that I fix are two, three, and five, simply because they are prime numbers, so they are interesting. Uh, and we will be recording the validation set errors that we get when performing this operation that is really the same that we did in item B, but now in a loop context. So we split the data again with this uh, percentage for test size, and we record the validation set error for that for those three different types of split it, split it. Um, let's compare them. So for example, for a set of two, we get this validation set error. For a different seat, it's pretty similar again. And for a different seat, it's also pretty similar. So, so far, uh, we didn't really gain much. Although we do see that there is some stability, at least in the test errors, no, sorry, in the estimations of the test errors for these, uh, for these cases. And perhaps that is to be expected because what we saw over here, these very small standard deviations for the coefficients in our model. So there seems to be quite a few uh, variability. Lucio, I have a yes. couple of comments here. In the summary, because we're dealing here with a logistic regression, uh, those coefficients cannot be interpreted as the linear regression, okay? Because they are exponents, all right? So to get a, a, a interpretation on the odds ratio, which is the one that is going to give you how many, you know, what, what is the probability of this affecting the the result? Uh, you have to convert to exponent those coefficients. Okay, so that's something that uh, we have to be aware in logistic re regression, that you cannot interpret those coefficients, you know, as you interpret the linear regression as uh, direct estimates. So you have to convert it to exponents and then you get the odds ratio. And I, 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 don't, I don't know what is the number there, but if you do the operation on the income, for example, that is a very small uh, you know, exponent, when you get the OS ratio, then you will see that even though it's a small number, it's positive. So income is 
because of the p-value, income is affecting positively the, the probability that the, that the observation is going to be in default, okay? And the other thing, it was interesting that you changed the random states. If I was, if I was going to do the exercise, uh, I would have changed the test size, <laughs> okay? Uh, I would have changed the test size, in other words, you know, trying different test size, for example, uh, taking 10% or taking 20% or leaving it at 33%. And that's another way to, uh, you know, uh, uh, get the, you know, uh, uh, get different uh, test splits. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in that, in, in that way, yeah. <laughs> Okay, yeah, and you will see a little more, maybe more, more difference uh, there. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, yeah, and maybe in some case. Uh, yeah, you, you, usually, few... usually your validation, you know, the, the test size usually is around 20%, you know, 25%, etc. So mm -hmm. we can, we can, you know, do like, let's say 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and then see if there's really a, a significant change, yeah, yeah. That, that, uh, as 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 you know, the 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 biggest that I have seen in in the in the real world is thirty percent. Yeah, yeah. As you can see, if the size small, then the error tends to be a little bit uh, bigger. Okay, because you have small data, right? You know, small sets. As you increase that test set, then sometimes you know it goes a little bit lower. Yeah, that, that that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, in that sense, I suppose that if we go a little too extreme, uh, for example, for 0.8 for the test size, well, yeah, test that's, percentage, that's too much. <laughs> yeah, I know, but still, it's, uh, okay, even more extreme, I guess that the error should be even bigger. Uh, yeah, but it, it, it still, you know, gives you a, you know, like a plateau, you know, eventually. But still, uh, you know, in, in real world, about, 10 to 30 percent is the is the norm uh so you have more data in the training so that the model can you know do a, a an effective uh a learning process <laughs> uh, yes I, I wanted to see right now if, mm -hmm. if if we use very small well a very small percentage of data for the training uh, if the error kind of blew up but no as you said it seems to plateau right Right, I, I, I make sense, right? Because you know, even though you're increasing the test size, uh, probably you know you are going to have you know a, a, a plateau in the in, in the in the error uh, uh, metric. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Ricardo. Uh, let's see, and now we're over here. It says consider the, the same type of. I don't know. Consider the logistic regression case. Uh, of course, we have the same response, but now we do take into account the column students. Um, because it is a class, um, as we saw in the in the table over here, it's labeled uh, with a factor, so we convert it to a dummy variable, <laughs> and and then include such dummy variable into the logistic regression model. So, because it is a data frame, we can apply to this student column, simply convert it, uh, because this returns uh, a true or false, and if it is true, then we simply can convert it to one. Um, if it is false, simply to zero. So, once we execute that, uh, uh, I'm sorry, and there was this case also, the student, it only has two, two classes. So, uh, adding only one dummy variable, uh, it's, it's sufficient. Uh, and we have now analytics, and we can see for yes, in the student column, it's now a one in this new column. So now we do uh, the same operation, splitting, uh, training, and validation, but now we do consider this new dummy variable. And so let's calculate again with this same threshold. Uh, what is the validation set 
Eh, perdón. 0.027. So about 2.7%. Uh, compared to the other case, we got... Over here. 2.4, 2.5. In the other cases, it seems that 2.5 almost. Uh, well, approximately. But now the test error did increase. So, well, so that's nothing. I think we can really conclude much uh, yet. There is more to be done. And then, let's see. Ah, and that is it for exercise five. Exercise six, uh, let's see, let me remember what it says. Mm -hmm. Ah, this is this one is focused on using bootstrap to instead of simply reading as we saw from this table over here about the standard error esti estimates for the coefficients in the model corresponding to logistic regression. Uh, now we're going to kind of manually using, sorry, estimating this standard error. Simply as we saw uh, about how Bootstrap does it, and that is via taking sample with replacement of the data set that we have. In this case of the default data set. So let's load in the data. Uh, well, it will be the same. So let's start with item eight. It says, and uh, using a, a logistic regression model, predict the default again with income and balance as predictors. But now, with um, the multiple logistic regression model, and um, using these functions and this one over here, uh, take a look at what are the estimates for the for the standard errors of the coefficients. I think it's exactly the same as, as the other exercise in the first item. But now if we use these summary results, uh, we do get uh, like an actual table as the out. Well, uh, uh, how do you say? Uh, I'm easier to, to work with table because then from this table, we want to extract these two particular values. The, the estimated coefficients. Uh, and then we want to compare if, if we are using bootstrap, this type of standard errors are really the same that we're going to get. So in this case, I use the summary function that they mentioned. So that for, from this table, we want these two values, uh, well, this one over here and this one. And because it is a Panda data frame, then we can, drop this row because it's just information about the intercept. You drop the row, the setting over here, axis equals to zero. And then we want these two values, right? So it's just a column coef. So performing that operation, we get the estimates that we want. Now, uh, for items B and C, uh, well, I didn't really do it in the same way that they were mentioning over here. Uh, I more, it's uh, my implementation. It's more similar to the one that they do. They do sorry. They showed in the lab. So, for example, um, uh, let's begin with this one. Over here. So we are going to be performing bootstrap. Uh, over here, the it's really going to be just this data set, this uh, default data set. And as we can see over here, once we fit the model, uh, what we want to return, because that is what we're trying to, to calculate the standard error of, it's these two values over here. So we simply, from the results, after fitting this logistic regression model, we simply extract, extract them, as I showed already in the previous step. So that is what this function is doing, returning the coefficients after fitting the logistic regression model, as we have been doing over these past exercises. And now in order to calculate the 
standard error, well, sorry, the standard deviation of these coefficients, we implement the same function that they mentioned in the lab. And the parameters really, uh, well, that, that are important in this case are really just uh, this ones over here. Uh, what is the data set? In this case, is the default data set. How many iterations do we want to do? So how many times are we going to fit the a logistic regression model and extracting the coefficients? And then simply setting a, a seed because there's going to be some, um, what, what is the seed is? Um, Ah, because of the of the replacement or of the sample with replacement. That also needs a seat. Okay. So now we have implemented the functions in the same way that they show in the lab. So we simply specify our predictors, the response, the data set. Uh, I tried to do a thousand as they show it as they showed in the lab, but it take it took a while to to finish executing. So I will only be showing for a 100 iterations, so 100 samples of the reparation we are going to be extracting from this data set. And now that we execute these functions, uh, what is the standard error, sorry, the standard deviation that we estimate for the coefficients or related to this model? And let's see, I think it takes a minute. For income, this is our estimate of the standard deviation. And for balance, this one. And if we compare with the estimates that the summarized function gave us, and they're pretty similar, although, except for balance, right? It was much smaller in that case compared to us. But that may, that may have been the case that because we only do, did 100 iterations, maybe if we did more, and I suspect that that would be the case if we did more iterations, then this estimated coefficient via bootstrap would be very similar to these ones that the summarized function gave us. So, well, those are items B and C combined to more closely follow the lab. Uh, and well, the, it was just comment the comparison, and I already said that. So. No, uh, this one was a little bit more interesting because uh, we have to manually implement the code for one of the processes that we learned. In this case, it's for leaf one node cross validation. Instead of just running it, running it, for example, with this function, right, that, that they gave us for k for well, okay, okay for validation and simply setting uh, the number of k to be equal to a number of rows. But we are not going to, I think we, we don't even use this. Or do, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So let's see, let's try to manually implement this one now cross validation. Uh, now we are going to be working with another data set. In this case, it's the weekly data set. And it's not over here. Over, no, no, over here, sorry. So we already worked with this data set in the previous chapter, but let's just remember it. So we have here some lag predictors, well, or columns, volume today and direction. And what we are interested in predicting was this class value of direction. In particular, the classes for direction are only up and down. And we cared about the predicting if the direction is up. I think because that represented uh, an increase in the value of a share in the stock market, something like that. So let's see, it says first, Simply fit a logistic regression model that predicts direction using these two columns, lag one and lag two. 
Okay, so we we specify the predictors. Uh, we feed this realistic regression model, and as I said before, the response we are giving it not as a class but as a one, representing the success or or representing that class that we are interested in predicting. Um, we already have the model, and then it says. Now, instead of fitting the model using all of the data set, we're going to fit, in, to fit the model using all of the data set, except for the first observation. That is, except for this first row over here. And just a, a little bit of explanation about the code of, of how Pandas works. And for this case of dropping a row, we can still use this drop method of the data frame class. And because we are dropping a row, we specify axis equals zero. And in this case, a weekly data set is very uh, clean. I mean, it has already been preprocessed. So the, the index of, well, the rows, uh, their index also corresponds to the row number that they are in. So over here, we can access, for example, row n, yeah, the index n. So in that sense, it's sufficient to be using yes, drop. So with this code, for example, we drop the row uh, index at zero. So that is dropping the first row. So you can see over here. Um, because eventually we have to write a loop and it's going to almost um, be the same. Lucy, yes, can, can I make a comment there? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, go back to the drop uh, function. Okay, uh, very important. Uh, right now, because we're not using uh, in place or assigning uh, another variable, uh, this is just shows the, the that data set without the first row, but we haven't done any 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 changes in that data set yet. Right. Yeah, we can still see the column that we supposedly dropped. It's still yeah. Dropped. If if you want to save that changes of dropping that first row, uh, you need to put in place right. That's one 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 way to do it. Or you can say weekly dot drop whatever you're going to drop and then assign it to weekly. Okay. And there, what you're doing is you're changing that the data set, uh, you know, dropping that that row, specific row. Okay, okay because uh, so sometimes it happens that you know I just you know put the drop etc. But I forget, <laughs> I forget you know putting it in place or putting there, and uh, it, it gives me the the original data data set. So it's a uh, you know, it's something that can happen. <laughs> Right. In, in this case, it's pretty useful that this operation in and itself doesn't mm -hmm. affect the original data frame because right. we're going to be. Yeah, I, I know that you're going to do it in, in the function. Correct. Yeah. You're going to do it in the function. But in the function, you see that you have D, right, which is the data set drop, and then you assign it to another object. Okay. So so you, you need to do that operation to do the change in that data set. Yeah, thank you, Ricardo. Okay, so I will be doing this once, the well, this item, but really like generalized version because we're eventually we're going to be dropping all of the all of the rows, like one by one. So we simply define the function, and this is going to be really just a weekly data set, uh, and I. This parameter is the row that well the row index no the index of the row that we want to to drop so we fit sorry we specify the predictors for our model uh, then uh, we take so we store the observation that we are going to be dropping of the training dataset and 
Now we consider all of the data set except for the row that we are going to be dropping. So this would become the training data set, dropping the row, and this would be the test or validation, really, the validation and data set, that row that we drop. And over here is really the same, the same case as we have already been working with, but fitting the model and giving the training data. Uh, and now, well, over here it's not really test, it should be X validation. We're not, it's, it's still not a testing data set. But now that we have fitted our model with the training data, we can predict uh, the direction class for the row that we particularly dropped. So over here, uh, well, the X, no, no, the predictor for that row would be simply dropping the response column. And then what that what what would be the the actual response in the row that we dropped? Well, because it's only one row from the response column, we simply want to extract that specific value. So we can use the values method and then extract this unique element. Uh, so now the we have that clear, uh, we use the model to predict the probability. So with this data, we do the prediction. Uh, again, it's simply one value in the validation data set. So we can retrieve this a specific value with this function. And then because we have uh, a probability as a prediction, we use the same threshold to assign a class. And now we get a predicted class. Now, lastly, the, the outcome, the result of this function is going to be what was the direction class for the row that we dropped? And what is a direction class? No, sorry, the predicted direction class for also that specific row that we dropped. So let me just run it. And in this case, I'm going to be dropping the first row, train the model without it, and then predict the, the direction for that row in particular. So we get that. Uh, the actual value was down for this row, as we can see right here. But the model predicted a, value, a class of up. So that's already one error that the model is making. Now, for this part, uh, part D, they ask us to do this same pr process as we saw right here, but now for all of the rows. So that would be simply a for loop. And we get how many rows does the data have? And we're going to be counting the number of errors uh, committed. So we iterate over all of the rows and we get these values, the disparate the real response and predicted response. And we simply want to add one to the number of errors. If there was an inaccuracy in the prediction, that is if the real response was different than the predicted one. So let's do that. And the number of errors, let's see how, how many do we, do we commit. I think it's around 0 0.5 with this model. Uh, well, just to be commenting ahead of this, uh, after we get this um, test error estimate via the this one out cross validation method, uh, I'm going to do the 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 other the other operations that we have been doing of splitting the all of the data in training and validation, and via this validation set approach, get a an estimate. It, it's probably a bad estimate, but still is is one at least of the test data. So just a simple split of the data, uh, a certain percent of it to be, a, well, not test, but a validation, part of the validation set. Okay, so how many errors did we commit? 
490. So the well, the estimation of the uh, rate classification error would be about 0.5. There's our estimate. So it's already very, very bad because it's, it's trying to predict a, a binary response. So it's almost as good as flipping a coin. Uh, and now just to compare what would, what would have been the, the estimate of the test error, if we simply do this more, more basic approach of using a validation set uh, in this manner, well, simply we executing with this code, we get an estimate of the, uh, how do you put it? Uh, error rate, no, classification error rate. Our estimate is now about 94%. So it's already quite a big difference. And it would have been good to also include over here, again, doing this, but no, not via this one out, nor via the validation set approach, but with k fold, probably using k, k equal to 5 or 10, because it's the usual, and comparing these values. Uh, but it would probably would have been the result of that operation more closely, sorry, a more close number to this one over here compared to this. Okay, and that's all the exercises I did. There are, there are two more left, eight and nine. Did anyone uh, do any of those exercises? Lydia immediately type now. And Ricardo, did it, you... it was a, the, no, it, this was a busy week, so I, yeah. uh, I, I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't pitch in, you know. <laughs> I, I only just finished this like 15, mm -hmm. minutes, 15 minutes ago, no, 15 minutes prior to the meeting. I right. think we, were, we were all too busy, but yeah. at, at least we, we showed up, so that's what matters sometimes. Oh, uh, let's see, what is it? Yeah, busy week. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. next week I'm reviewing the other, the next chapter, so. And yeah, what is the next chapter? Yeah, before finishing the meeting. Ah, yeah, linear model, regularization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, regularization. So, linear is already signed up. So, no, sorry, I want to do it. Oh. Okay, thank you everyone for coming. Okay. I will see you next week.